Indiana. It's Purdue and Indiana in a very important Big Ten clash here on CBS. Indiana in the white, taking advantage of the steal. Purdue in the black. Dick Stockton and Bill Raftery as the Hoosiers of Indiana who have struggled this year against Purdue. And Bob Knight is off the bench already yelling at Ed Hightower. <laughs> Tom O'Neill made the call as both clubs come out man to man, and that was in front of Gene Cady, the lesser of two evils. Go the other way. All right, the big story for Purdue, they have won six in a row, and amazingly four straight on the road in the Big Ten, and that's unheard of. Mentally tough, much like the mentor. Gene both, Cady. Both clubs like to run motion, a lot of pumping. They've been doubling up any baseline penetration. And he's done a great job after the big dog, Glenn Robinson, graduated. Now with the pros, Purdue coming in with a record of 16-5 and five and 7-2 and two in the Big Ten. Porter Roberts, the point guard, working against the Indiana defense. Misses the shot at the buzzer, and a foul is called against Purdue. I think Brantley over the top pick. The standings coming into this game, Michigan State has a one-game lead over the Boilermakers, but they're even with two losses. Indiana struggling at 5-5, five and five, and the Hoosiers are in jeopardy of missing the NCAA tournament bill for the first time in a decade. Amazing, and yeah, you knew by yesterday's practice that was foremost on his mind. Michigan State with a great comeback game against Penn State, and Katie, you mentioned mentally tough, known for their defense, and that's carried him with the missing big dog. Michael Herman is the point guard and a steal made on the far side by Justin Jennings. Here's Porter Roberts. Indiana getting back defensively, a foot block called against Indiana. The officials working today, Ed Hightower, Phil Bova, and Tom O'Neill. Indiana, an unaccustomed 5-5 five and five in the Big Ten, 13-9 overall. Here's Brantley, stuffs it through. Brantley came in when Brad Miller, the freshman who started today, picked up two early fouls. I mean, you're not looping to the shack. Yeah, that should not happen against an Indiana team. Evans played by Martin, terrific defender. Zoe does it on both ends, Nick. Anderson, he's the big gun, and uh, Conzo Martin did a number on Respert of Michigan State in a game you saw this week, and now he's got another big assignment. Solid, and then he gets a lot of help, too. They pay attention. Good feed inside. Jennings misses the layup. Indiana, but Purdue gets back. Purdue very solid defensively. And they're going to jam things up. Quite challenge the outside shooting. Ryan Evans driving to the hoop, and that's what Bob Knight wanted them to do. Oh, well, he has to do it. He's got the outside shot. Now he's delivering the kiss. First basket of the game for Evans. Anderson zoned it up. They switched last game, did it a little bit that time. Purdue still has the ball, and will take a break. Early in this big, hotly contested intrastate rivalry between Indiana and Purdue. Looking good. Basically, your car's a great idea. Yeah, especially when it's my new Grand Am. Well, he couldn't take my car. Jack and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. AT&T, we help put your world within reach. And by the 54,000 new employee owners of United Airlines. Come fly our friendly skies. Indiana has the early lead in the Sea of Red here at Assembly Hall. Uh, Purdue has turned it over already five times, but Indiana following the coach's orders, I guess, Bill. Well, drive, and uh, you know Bob Knight would make suggestions. You better pay attention. We shook hands in a defensive stance just to be prepared for him, but his whole philosophy, Evans going to the basket this time, he hammered this home with his players, the pretty kiss at the end, and that should help him shoot the jumper now, loosen up the defense, and he got right after the officials on that little exchange on the sideline out of bounds. Purdue has hit only one of their first five shots, and we mentioned the five turnovers, which is why they're in an early hole here. Into the game for Purdue is Herb Dove, who's a fine defensive specialist and uh, one of the top athletes. They bring in Todd Forster as well, and you'll see Purdue go 10 deep in this mm -hmm. game. He, he lies on his bench. Forster, a real scrapper. A lot of motion. Look at the back cut. Notice if Indiana switches and where they switch. That's a key to taking advantage of that. They go low now to Brantley. Waddell has the shot blocked from behind by Charlie Miller. 
you know, looking at these three officials, do you think they had dinner last night and breakfast knowing they had these two guys on the sidelines? <laughs> uh, Brantley doesn't look to be a threat in that box, but Waddell very confident, had that knee injury in September. Great bounce back by both he and Martin coming off those knee problems, and he can shoot it, and of course complement it with a bounce to the goal. Gene Cady said, I thought we'd be even better in December. You know, you lose the big dog, and you think you're going to go down, and it doesn't work out that way, and Purdue riding a six-game winning streak, including the first meeting between these teams on January 31st. Look at that, 29 of 31 free throws for Purdue. Mm spent the night and they did foul and over the years traditionally indiana's advantage has been getting to the free throw line another thing they harped on get foul we got a little stoppage in play here yeah it looks like uh evans has some problem with, with his shoe yeah well that can't bobby will cancel that shoe deal so he's changing the shoes and now he's changed them so he is back out there now so it is uh herman evans along with henderson Steve Hart, the sophomore from uh, Terre Haute, starting this game, and Charlie Miller. And if Evans has a good half, we'll say it's the shoes. <laughs> Waddell trying to save it. Violation. And the clock, not only was it kicked off the uh, foot of Roy Harrison, but the clock expired as well. So this crowd appreciative of Indiana's early defense. Charlie Miller, a slashing type, so you may look for him to go by his guy as they run their bumps. One of the three freshmen that has been starting for Indiana. We saw the sophomore hard instead of the big man Andre Patterson today. See, they're playing defense like they were guarding Stockton and Raftery. They're jamming everything here. They're just letting them shoot that deep one. Not by, not by the line. <laughs> as you should be. Anderson likes to lock his guy. And on the shot clock, Hart misses the rebound by Bradley. Purdue, what luxury, they bring off their top two rebounders and second leading scorers off the bench. And they were starters early in the year, so they're very confident performers. Hairston, a tough guy, in or out, on the box or deep. Brantley and Hairston coming off the bench. Here's Waddell going inside. Wide open is Foster. Misses the three and the rebound on the other side by Hart. Indiana leading by five. It's been a while since we had any scoring. Early offense, I think, important against Purdue. This time they settle back. I think Indiana's got to challenge them, take advantage before the D gets set up. They quickly double Evans, and they're going to lead Miller open. Herman open, and it's a three-point basket, the first in the game for Michael Herman, a freshman from Chicago who became a starter for Bob Knight when the Big Ten season got underway. Good block inside, and they're going to call the foul on Allen Henderson on Brantley. Well, you mentioned Herman's uh, jumper. You've got to establish an outside game when they're jamming things in, whether you screen them in or they attack the box. This is confident. Steve Hart has to continue to look as well. If they can make that, then they can put the pressure on the other end. Good double up on the box, unfortunately, the foul. Ronzo Martin and Chad Austin check in the game. Martin has not scored yet. Remember, he's coming in averaging 18 points a game. He suffered a cramp in the latter stages of the Michigan State game and a brilliant 28-point effort. An enjoyable game, and he played and showed what the inners in his body are. Just aggressive, involved, very enthusiastic. One free throw for Brandon Brantley. Nice flash, but a good post day. Indiana's lost it. Herman, he hit the three the last time, and he stuck through, and the basket's going to count, and credit it to Miller. Shelly, it's Miller time. He's got some hop stick. <laughs> Miller has six points. He has half of Indiana's total, field by Allen Henderson. Send it in, big time. And Brantley got a little lazy that time. He sure did, and that's what home courts are all about. Get after it. Indiana hoop fever. In business, the only thing you know for sure is that every day will bring the unexpected. Indiana with an 11-point lead. Purdue has as many turnovers as they have shots so far. Seven. Hanzo Martin. 
Chad Austin with Todd Foster, Brandon Brantley, and Roy Hairston are the five in there for the dark-shirted Purdue Boilermakers. Great pressure on the ball last time set up the Henderson. Here. Here's the gamble. It does not work. Evans was late getting over to help on Hairston. Well, don't give him a chance. It's Juco, player of the year. First basket of the game for Roy Hairston, who had started from Jersey City, now playing in West Lafayette. Hudson County. <laughs> I've got a few nicks from my days over there. <laughs> But all set up by good analysis defensively. You notice the gamble outside. Here's the step to Hairston. Strong to the goal. And Evans a little tardy getting down, Dick. Hairston and Brantley had started, and they were taken out six games ago, and it seemed to be the magic potion for Gene Cady. But it's 14 to 5, Indiana leading. Just under 13 minutes to go in the first half. Nice pump. Used the dribble by he got to pry a little bit against this collapsing D. Look at that driving. You got to have. <laughs> and he went right around Chad Austin, who was a matador out there. Yeah, he sure was. Opened up that baseline. No support. 11-point lead for the Hoosier. Off the ball activity. Harrison is a knocked away, and they'll call the foul. Hart thought he had the steal. Instead, Phil Bova said he got in there. Great anticipation. A referee a little bit closer on the reach him, but that's exactly what Bob Knight would like. If it goes in, dig and scratch. You mentioned the Matador. Olay, Dick, you can't have that kind of an opening. And Hart, not known for the deep shot, this should have been a cushion. You got to pay attention to his scouting report. Second personal on Hart. Meanwhile, Porter Roberts, number 23, with the ball, the point guard, back in for Purdue. He really never turned and challenged. Gives Henderson a night off. Henderson. Uh, is really asking Brantley to take the shot from out there. And just zoning everything up. Look at him helping. And Brantley hits the jumper. Well, Henderson may have to play him a little tight. So much for our scouting report. Well, that's on paper. Now they go play the game. I don't think Brandon will take that consistently all afternoon. Indiana has led all the way. They're up by nine, 16 to 7. Herman driving. Gets the rebound. Can't convert. Look at this. Indiana is crashing the offensive glass and doing a great job of it and a foul called against Indiana and that'll be against Evans his first. Attack the glass and I think even though Purdue will look to push the ball is that Indiana can go after it. They've got good team speed. Purdue not an all out running game so you can get back and get some semblance of water. Indiana now with four team fouls. More than half of this first period left to play. Austin finds Martin. Martin and a travel called against Austin. And that is the eighth turnover for Purdue. And this is unlike the Boilermakers. Kentucky with an eight-point lead in the first half against Notre Dame and the other score. And Dick, I thought there was a walk before on Austin from the top. Great pressure on the ball, harassing the guy with the dribble. Back screens. Henderson looking at Evans was over. Now it's Martin on Evans. Set their guy. Look at his double screen in a freeze hard. Great pass. Oh. Henderson and the tip in made by Evans, I believe. But a great pass by Henderson to set it up. Uh, they're playing like they did against Kansas, huh? Hairston misses the layup. Hey, Indiana's playing defensively as if they have six or seven out there. Well, they play like they were afraid of the mentor. And they get the charge again. You jump in the air, bad things happen. Offensive foul against Michael Herman. That's the 15 foul against the Hoosier. All the screens set up what amounts to a tip in. You see Henderson. Here's Hart, who just came off a staggered double. Does not convert, but paid attention to business. Ryan Evans, who's sneaky on the tip. Neil Reed is coming in for Indiana. He is the freshman sensation from Metairie, Louisiana, who aggravated a chronic shoulder problem. He's a good outside shooter. He wears number five. And back in the lineup for Purdue is Brad Miller, their starting center, the freshman who picked up two early fouls. A little bit of a gamble, huh? Feeling the game is getting away, or maybe Stroll Miller to be careful or at least control the defensive class. Justin Jennings hemmed in. Here is Miller popping out. Rebound, Reed. Numbers it over to Evans. See, when you're not an all out running team, it's tough to get organized.
and he's upset because all of a sudden the best laid plans are going down the tubes. If you make outside shots, you've got to attack them out there. Purdue with 11 shots and eight turnovers. That's a bad number if you want to hang in and win another road game in this big game. They got steps on the block. And another turnover. That's nine. Traveling call against Brad Miller. Valuing the ball, Gene Cady said to us, Bob Monsback, Dick Stockton, that you got to value the ball. And that's what's been their success all of a sudden. Good. The struggle. Good pass from Neil Reed into Allen Henderson, and he's fouled and will go to the free throw line. And this is unlike the first meeting in West Lafayette. No, well, home courts will do that for some reason. It changes it. And how about Gene Cady? He's run out of hotels down here to stay in because he refuses to stay in one where he lost. So he stayed in Indianapolis. And he's, with me, I'd be back in Des Moines, I think, by the time he got a hotel. <laughs> Trying to beat Indiana here. Brad Miller came in briefly, picked up his third personal foul, and so Miller goes to the bench. He had a season's high, and a career high for that matter, in scoring and rebounding against Michigan State, so already produced behind the eight ball. What's that, guys? Got the whole package, this guy, Dick. I know you did in your undergrad days, but uh, a student, pre-med. My package was in books that I carried to class. You were two terms up at Syracuse, huh? <laughs> Roosevelt and Truman? <laughs> You're dating me now, Bill. <laughs> With a three-point basket, the three-point play has five. He is the heart and soul, and, and, and occasionally he'll come with a, a little bit of a down game, but it's not from lack of wanting to do it well and enthusiasm. Indiana up to a 16-point lead, but under 10 minutes remaining in the first half. This is an important game. And they're going to call the foul on Reed. Indiana, of course, in danger of not getting to that NCAA tournament. And a lot of people feel that Indiana will have to win six of their last eight games to get there. Might as well start now. Well, this is an important game. You, you, uh, you're realizing the urgency watching practice yesterday is the detail. Getting back to Indiana basketball. Dan Dockage was telling me today they've gotten away from the good screening and the hard cuts, and it's made it difficult for them. Here's Matt Waddell, the best free throw shooter on Purdue team. In fact, their best career shooter from the line. But you look at this Purdue lineup, though. The guys either red shirt or had an injury or went to one year of prep school. They're a very mature group. Yeah, Gene Cady was concerned about the intimidation factor of playing here mm -hmm. in Bloomington, and uh, maybe that's been a factor. Well, he felt it was at his place for Indiana. Uh, hard on the other ones playing Martin. Look at this defense by a kid. Definite all Big Ten. Zo gets down and guards. Andre Patterson, seeing his first action, the freshman center, mm. did not start. Jennings forces a great steal. And uh, oh, that poor kid with his shoulder. I mean, he's wincing. Oh. What, what did they tell us? 20 shots he's permitted at practice. I mean, gutsy, and he's going to be a talent here because he can knock down shots. And this is the inexperience, unfortunately, and why there's a conflict within the team. You've got experience up front, and then you throw Patterson in. You've got inexperience in the backcourt on a consistent basis. So that's the reason for Indiana's up-and-down type of year. It isn't only the fact that they started three freshmen. No. Martin with a turnaround at the baseline. And the follow-up is good by Justin Jennings. Purdue is 6-0 since Jennings has become a starter. They're hoping that that string continues today, but they're down by 13. Mark in the corner. He's a real active player, too, Jennings. Both clubs value man-to-man -man defense. Although we, we have seen zones from both. Oh, yeah, and you, and you may see Indiana at some point today. They did it up at Northwestern. Andre Patterson is 6'8", goes outside to shoot. Rebound is by Conzo Martin. That's his first rebound of the game. Chad Austin. A little out of control there. Going to be a good one. Frank Kendrick, the assistant, had to reach him by Evans. He thought he had all ball. And Bob Knight has the basketball. Like to shoot in his undergrad days. Let's see what he does with it now. You know, it was 10 years ago today that Bob Knight threw that uh, infamous chair. And Purdue was playing in the game. Uh, so if you want to go back in history, Bob uh, had a... Uh, a flare-up a uh, decade ago. I'll tell you, I was impressed, though. He proved he could put it on the floor. He so put that ball down. Steve and Reed. Steve Reed, he was playing in that game, right? Got some free throws in the old days. Now doing the radio. Not much to say. <laughs> His team down by 13. Here's 
Chad Austin to his brother Woody. Played for Purdue, misses the first free throw. Now, Frank Kendrick, the assistant to Gene Cady, was telling me that he thinks Austin plays like Joe Dumars. Now, that's high praise. High praise. Alan Henderson committed the personal foul his first. Gets the rebound on the miss that time by Austin. So it's still 23-10. Good position inside Andre Patterson. And over the top, let's see if they call it on Henderson. Should be. Will. You're right, Dick. Right on top of it. But right there, there's no problem if Andre Patterson finishes the play. And he will get to that point in his Second career. Personal Second personal on Alan Henderson. Henderson. Who in his last three games has scored on average 23 points and 17 rebounds. Ian Evans uh, double barrel forces up front. And then the compliment has to come from outside, and Herman's been solid, Hart's been solid, Miller's contributed a little bit, and that's why they're in command thus far. Anzo Martin, 84% free throw shooter. And hits the first free throw, so the 18 foul against Indiana, and the bonus. Dick Stockton and Bill Raftery here at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. The rematch between Purdue and Indiana. Boilermakers won the uh, first meeting just uh, about a couple of weeks ago by 10. Different story today, and they're going to call the foul on Chad Austin after Henderson picked off the rebound. Yeah, and Chad didn't have to get involved in that particular play. Now, Martin, one of those people in the country that doesn't have a lot of glitter. We can relate to this, by the way. Not a, not a lot of pizzazz, but he's just... Day in and day out, there's a heck of a job for the great look. And coming with a great pass. So much for pressure. Okay, Indiana cutting and slashing to the hoop just the way Bob Langford wants. Well, you've got to attack pressure before the D gets set. Excellent job. Great look. Seven for Henderson. Good pass into Brantley. That was Martin. Boy, Martin can beat you from inside, and he can also hit the threes, and you saw his playmaking ability. BB on the box. And they switch the D. You see they go a little zone. 12-point Indiana lead. See, these guys never got a call to do a clinic on zone. It's an adventure sometimes how your team's going to react defensively. Collapsing on Henderson inside. They won't let him get the ball in there. Well, you can force the deep look. You can't get penetration, though. Herman misses. Henderson converts. Cleaning it up. Allen Henderson with nine. Nine to five. Allen Henderson. 27-13 in favor of Indiana. The Hoosiers have led all the way. They had a 50-game home winning streak snapped by Michigan and then lost to Minnesota this week. But there's Brandon Randley hitting from outside, and he leads Purdue with nine. And Henderson looked over the bench and said to leave Malone out there. I'm supposed to zone up. They go back again in 2-3. Running their man stuff. Nice Good step defensive the ball. play by Jennings, and he'll get the return pass from Conzo Martin. Basket counts in the foul. Let it go, huh? Guys ahead. But defensively, you mentioned the good deflection. Henderson, they ran a man-to-man -man screen sequence. You'll see the pass on the step-in. And unfortunately, anytime you turn it over facing out like that, in that three-second out area, better judgment should have prevailed by Steve Hart. And let him score. Steve Hart committing his third personal foul. So Evans and Henderson with two, Hart with three fouls. And Brad Miller of Purdue, the only... Boilermaker in foul trouble with three, and uh, missing the free throw is Jennings, who is a 44% free throw shooter, and you saw why. Steve Hart, the Luke Skywalker. Under seven minutes to play first half. Now, Henderson touching it outside, they can't double. They should maybe give him the basketball. Here's the cut, and they don't give it. See, the timing of the passes isn't what it's been in the past, Dick. Nice free delivery. Here he comes again. Henderson picked up quickly by Brandley. Baseline play by Hart, and he's happy. That'll be on Jennings. Justin Jennings with the personal foul, and that is the 16 foul against the Boilermakers. Want to remind you, coming up next, the big Big East clash, and not only the lead in the Big East is at stake here as Marshall and Moton go out of it, maybe number one in the country. In the country, they may slip right in there, UConn. And if uh, Syracuse reacts against pressure like they did against Kentucky, they might have some problems. But I look them be a little more composed up at the Cuse. Syracuse will try to move into a tie for the Big East lead with a win, and Connecticut undefeated. No one has ever finished the Big East race undefeated. And you didn't mention Seton Hall, huh? Everybody picked them last. Who's going to save you on that one, Kevin? George Blaney out of the game.
last year, no one showed. Educational day. We're going to tell you about raptisms. You know when he says, kiss off the glass, this is what they mean. I love a man to man but you say at the top of every game if they're playing man to man Well, that's to get out of the talented play-by-play -play guy's <laughs> way. Right. And to send it in is one of those things, uh, both a jam and, uh, you know, it's over, fellas. Wrap the books and hit the bus. So you yes. the adjective when you talked about the play-by-play -play man. <laughs> <laughs> well, right here, both play great to one another, and I would look for Purdue to do a little more solid play with Martin involved, and look what's happening. Bobby Knight with a zone, a flat 3-2. You know, Indiana's had success when they've gone they, they have. Well, just because you don't play, it doesn't mean you don't know how to teach it. Just Waddell, Austin, Martin, Brantley, and Justin Jennings. Good basketball. Oh, so much for the zone. Now you turn to Dan Dockage and come back and say, you told me to play the zone. What the heck is wrong with you? Jennings with six points. They pass the ball well and spread the defense well there. Gorgeous cut, cut, and the dump down. Purdue still is what you say to man man. Still, still <laughs> straight up traditional. Can I borrow that phrase once in a while? You can uh, be my guest. Nine-point lead for Indiana. Led all the way. Great pass in again, and no basket. The foul before the shot. But Andre Patterson, Indiana making terrific entry passes inside today. And Dick, uh, you go zone, you got to still cover areas of the floor. Indiana did not do a good job on the gut cut. Todd Lindemann coming in for the first time. And here's that look, look at this, and then the dump down. Just good, solid basketball. It's one of those when you're not used to playing zone, do I go up on the man as he cuts up to the three set, top of the three second lane, or do I stay back? Lacking communication. Indiana now in the, the bonus situation as a result of the 17 foul against Purdue. Bob Knight has puzzled as a lot of people over why the Hoosiers have struggled. But he seems to take a lot off his fastball with the young kids when things aren't going well. well. You know, you look at him and you're sort of glad that you're not going to confession to him, though. <laughs> Think about it. Deflection and yet another turnover. I think he might give you extra punishment if he did a few things wrong. Ten turnovers by Purdue, unaccustomed to them, and that's why they're way down, 30-19 to 19 in the game. Henderson leading with 11 points, hitting the last free throws, and now they're going to call the foul the other way. Now they got a, they got steps, and why was Lindemann was at the top of the key, and Herman did not want to give him the ball. He didn't like the choice. Well, Lindemann right away has to go re-screen. Hairston replaces Justin Jennings for Purdue, and uh, coach's son, Pat Knight, who has not scored in the last six games, will replace Michael Herman. Looks to set people up. He understands his role and what he can do. Now, Bob Knight didn't take a lot of shots at Ohio State, incidentally. Indiana. They had a few other guys, didn't they? Yeah. Still in the zone, giving it another shot. Waddell can drill him. Waddell is fouled, and let's see if he was fouled in three-point range by Hart. And if it's against Hart, and it is, that'll be his fourth foul. I think you're right. Three shots. They can spread the zone. That's another problem. But if you're Bob Knight, you're trying to steal a little time, rest your guys a little. You know they've come out. End zone look, and look at the distance that Lindemann would have had to cover, and the reaction by Hart from out top. He had a longer distance, but the foot speed got him and there's the hit and you got to let him know too. hit that deck and scream Brian Evans has replaced Steve Hart who started this game and goes out with four personal fouls Matt Waddell hits the first of three attempts at the line so Steve Hart getting a start today and uh, Gene Cady telling us he'd be a tough matchup but he didn't count on foul trouble no. by Hart. and Bob Knight down there teaching away and explaining things that's a case, it's a gamble. Uh, you know the coaches gave him the count. He's gambling in his own part of the protection. But when you want to hustle and prove, and I see that in some of their tapes where they give everything and make a mistake. And they're trying to do exactly what he wants. Waddell, two out of three. He's an 85% free throw shooter, so he's got to be disappointed with that effort. Nine point lead for Indiana. It was up as much as 16 here in the first half. Screen and reverse the ball. Looking for Henderson. Now he's got to find somebody, Dick. See, they have trouble with that double up down there. He's so easily identified. But Harrison.
Houston committing the foul, and uh, Henderson will go to the line to shoot one and the bonus. That's the 18th foul. The, the double up on the box, what do you do? You see the dump in, and if we can hold it right there, you see all the bodies around them. You've got to make gut cuts. You've got to get into a passing lane form. There's three. You can count a little bit. You've got to find the hole. Alan Henderson looking for his 13th point of the game. Gene Cady. He doesn't really mean to have a smile on his face now. It's uh, not going well for the Boilermakers. He trailed 32 to 21 with under five minutes remaining in the first half. Kick ball and a new clock for Purdue. Well, it's a uh, far cry from the first game between these two teams. Indiana turned, uh, Purdue turned it over 11 times in their first meeting. It's West Lafayette already 10 turnovers in this first half. Chad Austin to the bench. You got to tell people that they're in his zone. It is amazing. Staying with it. Bradley Indiana. with it. It's shocking. They're, they're playing a textbook game, aren't they, in the first half? Very solid. Valuing the ball, important. At the front by Roberts down there, and then he left. Good dump in. They got it. They get Hairston from behind again. His second quick foul. Well, and Anderson will shoot. The duck in, Dick. You're not playing. This is generally a terrific down here. We've got on the block. Henderson, you don't see any fight. If we can hold it right there. Before the pass came, he had to decide on what side he wanted to play. Never did it. And Allen's king down there, particularly if they don't come with others. When there's a double or a triple, he's had some problems. Well, Indiana's getting the job done inside. Allen Henderson already is 8 for 9 from the free throw line. Has 14 points and 5 rebounds. And now trying to give the Hoosiers again a 13-point lead. And he does with less than four and a half to play in the first stanza. It's been all Indiana thus far. Trying to get to 6 and 5 in the conference. Now, this is probably the only way I would be able to play Bobby Knight's demand. A nice step in by Lindemann. Again, the turnover. And that's number 11. Evans try to hold on to it and it's still Indiana's ball and that's good use of the floor though you know you run back you taught all your life to go to the basket and then peel off good ball reversal what a sharp contrast for the Hoosiers performance compared to what they did at home against Minnesota this week when they lost here he's tough with a couple of days off though always has been Evans not given any opportunities he had Porter Roberts in his face and Evans hits He's got six points. Now. See, all the screening, you'll get a mismatch, and that's what happened there. Great take advantage by Edward Evans. Indiana by 15, their biggest lead, 16 here. So once again, firmly in command. They'll stretch with the looks. Hanzo Martin oh, misses the three and the rebound by Hairston. And they're going to call a foul against Indiana. The crowd thought it would go the other way. And I believe it's on Henderson. That's why everybody's a little bit upset. Three fouls on Allen Henderson. Mm -hmm. And Purdue's going to make a substitution. Justin Jennings will check into the game for the Boilermakers. Grant, Brandon Brantley will go out. It's a three on Henderson. And Dick, when you play zone, you can't identify the checkout. They stretch it with the great shooting of Odell on one side, Martin on the other. And you see the big guys are stretched out. They can't go back, identify, and stick anybody. And that's the easy opportunity. Hairston is a 50% free throw shooter, makes the first. Here's a fellow who is the, as you mentioned, the junior college player of the year last year, has adjusted to his role of going from a starter to a reserve. And I'm shocked now if Henderson stays in after the timeout. He stayed in with the made free throw with three. I don't think they can afford two guys with four, Dick. I'd be surprised if he stayed in. Timeout. You've got to meet a colleague half a world away, so you race through the airport, then fly for half a day. Indiana was hard out of the gate, and uh, Henderson, their leading scorer, Martin, has been held to one point and only two boards. Purdue, costly turnovers, and uh, right now you have to be a little surprised, uh, maybe not, Bill, that uh, Alan Henderson with three fouls remains in the game. I think it's a mind game. Bob Knight, in a, his own way, intimidating officials. You can't call one. That wasn't a good call. He got the, after them on the timeout. A big gamble. I would not take it. I dare you but to call the fourth. Is that what that's yeah, about? <laughs> I would not take it, but I didn't win very many games either, I might add. You've got a good job now. No one's complaining. <laughs> but being alongside you watching these games, the ringside. Charlie Miller 
Nearly a five-second violation, and here is Evans finds Knight. Good passing. And Miller walks. Good defense all the way around for Purdue in that sequence. It sure was, and even the reaction, they attacked the ball, and they will not permit you to use a crossover move. Charlie I mean, Miller, not a bad move. Thought he put the ball down before. Now you try to get Henderson into the defensive action at uh, Purdue. Now they're in the flat 3-2. It, it's, it's hard to identify him. He just has to control him. So look at Knight Hustle. He's playing a couple of positions. Deal by Charlie Miller. Another turnover. That's 12 in this first half. But Purdue is shooting themselves in the foot that way. With giving the ball up. Down by 13. Indiana's ball with 235 remaining in the first half. Henderson trying to lock his guy. There's the dump down, but Lindemann doesn't grab it. Lindemann lost it, and here is a chance for Porter Roberts. And he is fouled by Pat Knight going to the hoop, and he'll shoot two. That is the foul against Knight, his first person. Uh, you, you try and run a high low, you get the ball to Lindemann on the foul, and he doesn't squeeze. You see Henderson, who had sealed off, stepped across, and this giveaway created by bad ball handling. Pass and catch elementary. Chad Austin replaces Matt Waddell for Purdue. And here is Porter Roberts, who is really the soft-spoken leader. You expect the point guard to be really aggressive and loud. Not so much for him. And, you know, last year when they were struggling just a little bit, not that they ever had a problem, it was because he didn't understand his role of running the club. This year, solid. Get, doesn't take many shots, just gets it to the right spots. One free throw out of two. Lindemann cleared it. 12-point lead. Purdue is lurking. Not yet challenging, though. Henderson's trying to lock. They run the same play, but look at all the attention. Ah, there you go. Just squeeze the ball, big fellow. Lindemann. To Henderson, who's got 17 points here in the first half. And again, playing with three personal. Big thing with Henderson is even on a rebound, if they get a tip, don't get involved. Austin Wild shot. Didn't set himself, but Purdue still has it. Now he's open over Lindemann with the jumper. And that's by number three. Chad Austin, who is a pretty good shooter and freshman from Richmond, Indiana. When you see Bob Knight next time, the middle of the zone is open defensively. Half the suggestion. Let down and uh, see him. Let him know. And a foul call. Oh, they said Evans stepped on the line, and now Ed Hightower comes in and calls a pushing foul against the Purdue, so he actually overruled Tom O'Neill. Well, Tom O'Neill reacted to what he saw, and Ed Hightower was outside and saw the hands, and, and that's not a happy guy. Roll the dice, big fella. <laughs> oh, he mentioned to both of us, coming down here is a different world, both the way the game is called and for your kids. Here is Brian Evans, second leading scorer, second top rebounder for Indiana, and a whistle. They're not going to count the free throw as the officials blew the whistle before the attempt. Now, I'm just noticed that as you look over here, Bob Knight's hair is askew, so is Katie. This is a bad hair league. You know, you got Henson, Judd Heathcote, Judd, yeah. and so on. I don't want to offend anybody else. Oh, no. <laughs> what you have in mind? <laughs> Some of these guys with the gray hair, Tom oh. Davis. And others but uh, that's a good piece of officiating incidentally i think silver hair gray hair is nice would you agree he's catching on evans misses the free throw crowd upset because they're uh, not that upset because they're up by 12 but they thought evans had made the free throw that he missed and charlie miller holding on to his leg goes to the sideline must be some blood the reason to bring him over the sidelines you back to the zone that I could could have played for Bob in the zone, the old tavern league, put your hands up, don't move too much. He usually has tenacious pressure me, and this is part of trying to get his club going too. And obviously not saying too many bad things because the officials nodding their head. Tie those chairs down. Coming up on the Pennzoil at the half, Michelle Tafoya will take a special look into a unique relationship between Bob Knight and his son, Pat. That's all coming up at halftime. Miller went to the sideline, and apparently uh, maybe he's bleeding, and they've got to take him out of the game. If that's the case, and that is the case on his leg. So Miller is out. Andre Patterson replaces him, and here is Evans with his second free throw, and he makes one out of two. And Bob Knight making sure Henderson, he gambled and got away with it, Dick, those few minutes. And not going to chance the last minute and a half. 
Allen resting with three. 13-point lead for Indiana. It seems that Indiana's had that 13-point lead virtually the entire half. Now look at the middle of this zone on cuts. Roberts going up against Lindemann, and Lindemann gets the rebound. That's what he's got to do. Take over a little. You've got some talent using. Well, he played a lot of minutes, didn't score against Minnesota, but he's become more of a shot blocker lately. See what he does offensively. Good, good kick out. And, uh, just don't make mistakes. Just play. He's working a head hunt. Under a minute to go in the first half. Bad dribble. Chad Austin has it. Three on one. Numbers for Purdue. And Justin Jennings misses the slam, but he's fouled by Pat Knight. And he'll shoot with 47 and a half seconds to go. And they got a technical, too. On it. So you're talking. Let's see. No, they're just warning. Excuse me. Well, Boba. Pointing over. Jennings with a side saddle. This is all created by bad use of the dribble. Evans at the one end. Right here, you'll see the turnover. Evans in traffic. You've got to value the basketball. The great early give up by Austin. And this is a sideboard delivery. Oh, reaching back and trying to jam it through. And Bobby Knight's reaction on that foul. He can run, too. Justin Jennings, one out of two. I think you're not giving him a sufficient Let's credit here. It. 12 second differential on the shot clock to the game clock. Maybe get Evans a little bit involved off the dribble or a bump for a shot. A little more experience. See, nobody's screening for Evans over here. Patterson has the pass deflected into Lindemann and Hairston from behind, and they're going to call it on Hairston, and that'll be his third personal foul. Wow. Lindemann, what did he have this morning, Dick? Bottle it. Attacking the tin, getting himself in position to do some damage. Good duck in. Fortunate enough that the ball is tipped to him, but this is a strong, aggressive move with some authority. And has been a big disappointment. Because you expect more from the seven-foot junior. This is the first free throw. Comes in as a 61 percenter. Charlie Miller, who uh, suffered a cut, now has it bandaged on his uh, right leg. Returns to the game, replacing. Ryan Evans goes out. He has scored seven points. And another save, too. We want another foul. A big defensive situation. And Purdue, I would think, will take the last one at a good opportunity. Here's a good early push. Lindemann with two free throws. 13-point lead again. What else is new? Penetration by Roberts or Martin and Waddell for a deep one. They run a baseline bump for Zoe. Boy, Zoe has been quiet. He's got one point in the game. Big job by Indiana defensively. Final seconds, and they're going to call. Sideline out of bounds right. with the assistance of eight-tenths of a second remaining. 13 turnovers. You don't want to foul if you're Purdue, but you got to get near the basket, play the big guys. You know what, Bill? Down by a 13 when Martin has only one point and 13 turnovers, that's not all that bad for Purdue. And Waddell not really a factor either. They do go long. Good play. Heads up by Harrison. And that'll do it for the first half. But Allen Henderson with 17 leads Indiana. They got off hot and have led all the way. Indiana 40, Purdue 27. It's 10.15 in the Amazon and a butterfly flaps its wings, which spreads pollen and causes a caribou to sneeze, igniting a massive stampede that adds wind to a mounting storm, which alters the global pattern of weather and creates a downpour that... The makers have won six in a row, but they're down right now. And uh, if you would have told Bob Knight that Conzo Martin would be held at one point in halftime, he would have celebrated in a big way. Well, he would have been delighted, and they've not, they're not bounding the ball for due to the average 15 turnovers. They had 13 in that half. But how about the zone, too? An unbelievable job, and kept them in the game. Halftime statistics. Notice 9 for 18 for Purdue from the line in the 13 turnovers. Good, solid basketball. I thought Indiana did some good things offensively. But you've got to think of their defensive pressure. They've done a nice job on Martin. You'll notice 
our pregame thought about Zo uh, just didn't get enough looks. He didn't catch the ball where he can do his damage, although he is a good three-point shooter. Just 0 for 2. Say it isn't Zo, is Gene <laughs> Cady. We'll just see here as we circle him all the defense. In the last game, he was able to get himself free in, on bumps, but Dick, I think they're rushing some things, not getting him in, in position to do some damage. They got to get him involved a lot more. Yeah, I agree with you. They're going to come back. That's what they got to do. But instead, Alan Henderson, who leads all scorers now with 19 points, had 17, of course, at the half, starts off Indiana with a bang, 42 to 27. Their biggest lead was 16, and they've got a 15-point ball now. Oh, major league jam. Steal, bad pass that time by Waddell, picked off by Lindemann, and Waddell gets it right back. All right, I got to wait for some help now. Run the little cross court, and they get a little action, a good look for Martin, and that could be a problem. Hanzo Martin, who is the all-time leading three-point percentage shooter in Purdue history, starts off with his first field goal of the game. It's amazing, and those balls look lonely when you look at the shot chart, isn't it? He's not used to that. And for them to be a good basketball team, Zoe's got to get enough touches, particularly in their down screens. Porter Roberts trying to gamble for the steal against Brian Evans. Herman at the top. They're switching those inside assignments a little bit. Charlie Miller might have forced it, but went in anyway. So much. For the force, huh? Nine points for Charlie Miller. He came out strong. Four for four from the field. And here's a little two-three look to take away the middle. You mentioned that's what Indiana did effectively. You know, they all talk about the tough switching man-to-man, -man, but the zone has served Bob Nightwell. Anything to win. That's the name of the game. 44 to 30. I think Jennings can defensively have some problems with Henderson. If they get it in the right spot, he's taller. He has not been able to get under 10 much. They get to a nine-point deficit at one point during that first half. Wide open is Henderson. Oh, he should have shot it. Five on the shot clock. Evans trapped. And Lindemann is going to shoot with two. That wasn't a good offensive sequence no, for the no, Not at all. They really mistimed the pass and the cut. And Lindemann with a scraper to settle. Jennings and Miller, who came out early, had three personals in the first half to Brad Miller. Top of the key is going to be this, the open jumper. They can put Zoe there, put Waddell there. He can match up pretty well on the wing. Nice dunk with down. Great pass from Brad Miller to Justin Jennings. And Jennings, with nine points, is matched with Brandon Bradley as the leading scorer for the Boilermakers. Dick Miller's a player to look at in the future. Very well composed, understands the game. Solid and getting better. And a freshman. Mm -hmm. Henderson working his way to the hoop. Great shot. He can shoot over. He's got four or five inches on Justin Jennings. Big time move for Allen Henderson, who now has 21. So Martin hits another three. Well, you got to know his number if you're in the zone. Stay close. The number two, two. Score 23 against Indiana the first time they played. And West Lafayette has seven right now. I think, watch the uh, Herman takes a good setup jumper here. We'll check the cuts. And Evans will be called for the foul, I believe, on Miller. Michigan State, Hanzo uh, Martin, an all-round star, plus a great defensive effort against Michigan State. And cramps at the end and still reaching back to contribute. That's one of the great college games that I've been involved in watching and doing. I was impressed with Purdue because they had the boys on the road. It looked like they were going down and come back and win that one. Two competitive teams. Evans, by the way, picked up his third foul. Waddell with Herman in his face. Rebound by Allen Henderson. Waddell having an off game. Not, not, not really getting the opportunities with nice use of the bounce. And the foul will be against Indiana. I think Evans. That's going to be four on Brian Evans. So Brian Evans has four, and so does Steve Hart for Indiana. Well, going to the goal right here, the step in, and he was there plenty early. Maybe one of those play on jobs. And unfortunately, but there's another good solid play by Miller. Brandon Bradley replaces Brad Miller. Hanzo Martin misses the shot. Now watch the screens and see if they get the ball when the guy is free. Henderson down the block. Here's a back screen. 
gets it to Herman. Wide open for a three. Misses the shot, and Brantley gets the rebound. All oh, Evans very lucky. Good no call. Yeah, oh, they're fortunate. Anzo Martin in rhythm. Misses the three. Has hit two already in this half. Here's Evans coming back. Remember, he's got four. The step through. Risky play for Evans with four fouls. Lindemann misses the follow. Good strong play. Lindemann gets the foul. I tell you, he's going to get it. Straight A's from Bob Knight when they look at the film of this one. One of his biggest supporters is Ron Felling, one of the assistants. And they've been working for a couple of years at him being more aggressive. If he catches the ball, go strong to the lane. This one just being involved, being in the right spot, everything but the finish off. Or now, if you can post up and do some damage, they well, a little, little at a time. One step for mankind. You want it all. Bradley with his third foul. Austin comes into the game, replacing Waddell for Purdue. Now you thought on Purdue that the, them hanging around with a bad first half with Martin. And this is the kind of club that, with their solid defense, one can pound it away. They just want to hang around on the road and steal one. They won four in a row on the road, including a big win at Michigan State this week, and that's going to help the seating committee when it comes time to place Purdue in the proper place. They're a game behind Michigan State in the Big Ten. Each school has two losses. So Lindemann makes one, and it's a 12-point game. And remember, Conzo Martin, those threes in it. But there's the turnover. Bad pass by Roberts. Pretty good. Henderson stripped away in a foul. <laughs> Austin, his second. Uh, Gene Cady over on the sideline, not a happy guy at all. Looking at him, Dick, and you get the feeling that as you're going into your English class, he's going to be your professor for the year. Scary a little bit. A tender guy off the floor, but like solid basketball, that turnover, not a good one. He's got them playing pretty well on the road. And after the Michigan loss, four wins in a row, including the win at Michigan State. They have the schedule in their favor. Five out of the last eight will be at home. Porter Roberts checks out, and Todd Foster in the game for Purdue as Steve Hart, he's playing with four, makes the free throw. And you mentioned the 10 deep, and that's what he's been going, trying to find a combo right now that can get his club back in the ball game. Foster, a dynamo kind of aggressive performer, looking for a little spark from him. It's a fire plug and a spark plug roll into one. Now they go to 3-2. So now you got corners to cover. 13-point game. Purdue just can't get it much inside 10. Chad Austin might have had a shot. Good set by Martin. Austin again. Open is Martin. He's going to go for the three, and he's got it. Anzo Martin with his third three-point basket. He had one at the half. He's got double figures now, and it's a 10-point game. I think part of that play was his tip back to Austin to save it. Just contributes all the way. The little things that don't show up in the box score, Bill. Going for the fake is Justin Jennings. Herman misses inside. Here comes Purdue. This is their best possibility of narrowing the lead in this game. Mont Martin finds an open quarter. And he's got a three. And it's now a seven-point game. Indiana's lead has been cut to seven. It was 116. And that was all set up by Henderson not taking the foul line jumper. Gave it to Herman. In with the big guys. Couldn't finish. You've got to take the shot. Don't come fake yourself out of a good one. Got to have the responsibility as a big guy. Yeah. You do. He carries it well, generally. Yes, and traveling call against Steve Hart. And with 13.56 to go, Bob Knight can see it maybe start to slip away. Who knows? And the run is usually because of Zoe. Over in this corner, you'll see him involved. The discard here as he moves his own man to make sure now the tip causes now everybody else would figure stay there. Not him. Get out and hit the three. Purdue better hurry up. That 10 second violation may be looming and it looms. They got it. 10 second violation against Purdue. Turns the ball over to Indiana. And that is a big turnover because Purdue had been on a run. They'd outscored the Hoosiers 9-2 to two in the last three minutes to draw within seven. And nice little use of the timeout. Extend the floor a little bit, cause some damage. Hart 23, Herman 30, Henderson 44, Lindemann 15, Charlie Miller 3 for the white-shirted Hoosiers of Indiana. Indiana struggled. They've lost two home games. First time in about five years that's happened. 
short on the shot. Hart saves it to Jennings. It's a foot race. Hold on. Justin Jennings brings Purdue to it in five. And Purdue has just in time, huh? But you don't save it that deep. Jennings with 11 leads the scores. Martin right behind the 10. No lead to a fast break, Nick. Good hustle, but counterproductive. Herman had a shot for the moment and passed it up. There you go. Gets the basket anyway. That was freshman from Chicago, Michael Herman, who has five. And we have a wet spot on the floor. Or something was thrown from the stands. Piece of candy, sugar-free, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. Fat-free. <laughs> Cholesterol-free. Indiana now with the second trip where they extend the floor. This should help guard the forwards, and they switch on Zoe. Indiana back to the man-to-man. -man. And look at this matchup now. With the dribble, Lindemann, not a match if he takes advantage. Three-point shot. Miller, the rebound inside. 50 to 43, Indiana lead, 116, down to seven. And the pass inside to Lindemann, and they're going to call a foul against Purdue. And that will be against Brandon Brantley. His fourth foul. So, Bradley has four. He is the only member of Purdue's team with four. So, Brad Miller, who got into foul trouble early with three quick ones, comes back into the game. Herb Dove, he's a good defensive ace in there, huh? Good athletic performer can go strong for the offensive defensive class. And look at the switch, they don't get out. Miller working against Austin. Henderson on the other side. Miller knocks it away, and the foul is called against Jennings. And that'll be the third team foul against Purdue and the third personal against Justin Jennings. And this matchup, the problem is the size. You'll see on the weak side, look at Henderson's setup camp, the discard, and the ability to get it up. Does not score, but that is a advantage for Indiana, particularly on the boxer if he wants to take that 15-footer. Plum Bob on the jumper. Alan Henderson, 9 for 10 from the free throw line in the first half. This is his first try. He was trying to get that back as you said it. Like the string, like the Harlem Globetrotters used to have that string. Right? So, so, so right? Guys shooting well, you bring it up. But having watched him for four years, come off that terrible knee operation, and just to see him mount a courageous comeback and play so well, he has tried on his own to make this team a better basketball team. 22 for Allen Henderson. He is the only player in double figures for Indiana so far today. Straight up man to man. Dub throws it up, nearly throws it away. Jenny saved it. Good night. Away by Charlie Miller. It is still Purdue's ball. They have 16 on the shot clock. Now Charlie showed you his speed there. There was no way Waddell could get it or back cut. Good denial. And that's where they're going to win it. Either club stepping up, I think, in their man to man. Waddell back in the game. Good look. And Charlie Austin, or Brad Austin, hits the three point shot. So already there are five three point baskets for Purdue in the second half after none in the opening game. Quick release. Nice pull. Lindemann scores in the basket. It counts in a foul. Who is that guy? They've been looking for him. <laughs> foul on Dove. Well, Tom has been A-W-O-L on occasion. This time he reported to the command post. Everything, the footsteps marching. Strong for the goal. And that's the kind of game he should have. And his teammates embrace him. They've been waiting for Todd Lindemann to show what he could do, and it doesn't drop for him. Four points and five rebounds for Todd Lindemann. So much perfection, huh? <laughs> Too much. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> 53 to 46, seven point lead in the end. Nice in screen. Waddell open. I'll tell you, this team, that's a two point basket by Matt Waddell, who has been quiet today. He's got five. Now that's one that would have warranted a switch and jump out. A bigger guy playing the shooter. Loose ball, and it's still going the same way to Indiana. Timeout. Well, we got a ball game going here after Indiana dominated in the opening half. Every week, Pizza Hut talks to 50,000 people all across America. Hello? Hello. 
Pizza Hut. I do know it. Purdue coming back from uh, the deficit at halftime, outscoring Indiana by eight. Martin with no field goals in the first half, has three so far here, all from three-point range. And Bill, Boilermakers with five three-point baskets, and that's cut the margin down to five. Now you mentioned the threes, which are essential, but it's also the pickup of energy. Somewhat dissipating in Indiana because of the lack of bench. Purdue deeper, stronger, tougher, and it is a game of attrition. It does wear on you. To wear you down, they did against Michigan State. Mm -hmm. And at East Lansing this week. Alan Henderson, his Charlie Miller. Good screen by Lindemann. Looking to head hunt. Herman driving to the hoop. He's headed. How long ago was that play drawn up in basketball? There's Austin with a great drive. That's one of the original plays with oh, Indiana Rand. A few years ago when you started, I believe. <laughs> but the run and hook of Bobby Hoopregs years ago from Washington University. Bob Hoopregs? Yeah, You're bringing it my age of myself. Nice cut. Herman has been getting free. Missed the shot from the rebound by Waddell. Lead pass Jennings. Oh, he good. released early. And Justin Jennings now with 13. He's Purdue's leading scorer. A three point game now. Indiana is in a fight for their life. I think what happened, Michael Herman stopped running, waiting for his man, forgot to protect the back court. He's got to help others. And now the double up on the box by Henderson. And the amazing thing, Herman gets the good look. You figure he should be he should be in good shape defensively as you check the spot. Now he his responsibility is back. Never turned to look. There at the backcourt for the easy send it in by Justin Jennings. And he got the foul as they came back down the other end and tried to double on Henderson. Justin Jennings with four fouls goes out of the game. So does Chad Austin. This is the battle of attrition as Dove and Hairston come back in for Purdue. This is the closest the Boilermakers have been since they trailed 5-2 to two at the outset. And a wild pass by Herman, and now Purdue is in a position with a three to tie the game. And you know what kills Bob Knight now? Neil Reed has not played since he re-injured that problem shoulder early in the game. He doesn't have a lot of alters, so Michael Herman's got to suck it up a little bit. Crowd is quieted considerably, although Purdue does have some representation here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one or two. Gene's family. <laughs> that's about it. That's two, I, I think they get, they get 60 for tickets on call. And that's, I guess, the arrangement for at the Big Ten. And then there are the hustlers that can find devious ways to pick them up. I don't know that. Lindemann gets a hand as he goes out of the game, replaced by Brian Evans. Lindemann with four points and five boards. And a nice pat on the head by Bob Knight. You know, a side that people don't spot. I mean, he drills and demands, but appreciates as well. Yeah, I'm uh, really impressed with the way Purdue maintains poise on the road, mm -hmm. whether they win or not in this game. And now they're going to call Miller or Herman. They call Herman with the foul. Mismatch down below. That'll be the second foul on Miller in the third team foul against Indiana. Here the conclusion of today's game. Bill and I will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. And they run a little screw to play for Martin or on the box to Harrison. And Harrison didn't get the hoop. Didn't step on the line either. And here come the Hoosiers with Herman. This is the three, and the rebound taken down by Conzo Martin. Four rebounds for Martin. Once again, Indiana's lead is a precious three. Remember, it was 16. Look at the screen. Waddell off the screen. What a job they're starting to do in setting the guy up and getting free. Indiana, not doing it as well. Herman with a move around Dub. Dub's a good defensive player. And there's Miller with the rebound. So Purdue, for the third time, has a chance mm -hmm. to cut it down from three. Dub strong. And look at the screen for good luck. Dub for three. Could have tied it. Rebound Henderson. Major League snacks. Oh, he had oh. shirts all around him. Big rebound, and that's the tenth rebound for Allen Henderson. He leads all scorers with 22. Time remaining in the second half. Indiana by three, and a leaner that time by Wait. Miller and Evans. What and hustle. He gets the rebound. What hustle, Dick. Again, it's Miller. And he hits the time of three for Charlie Miller, his second of the game. That was a big basket for him. Sure Indiana. was. Well, they needed a pretty decent opportunity. They got two. Henderson 
committing the foul. Hairston going in, and for Allen Henderson, it'll be number four. It'll be a two-shot foul. Hairston will go to the line. He is a 50% free throw shooter, and you talked about Neil Reed. He's coming back in. And the arm is hanging down. It's unbelievable. The knockdown, well, in some homes, Miller time means something else. Right here, for Charlie, means a knockdown jumper. Henderson with four fouls. So Henderson, Evans, and Hart with four for Indiana. Hairston misses the free throw. Hairston is 0 for 3 from the line. Make it 2 for 3 for Roy Hairston. Now 3 for 4. And it's 58-53. Indiana leading all the way up by 5. There's all sorts of courage, and Reed showing you his form. The arm hangs down when he's looking at him cutting without the ball. This gives Herman a chance to rest and get his head back in the game. Here's Reed, good perimeter shooter when he's helped. Oh, it's, it's unfortunate. Nice little curl. And the Henderson the walks. Yeah. Looked like he walked before the call. He did. He walked into a walk. And a timeout. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Think of someplace private, someplace quiet. Someplace CBS Sports coverage of the Rose of the Final Four is sponsored by the new Monte Carlo, a driver's car built around your needs for comfort, security, and control. Pizza Hut, you'll love the stuff we're made of. And by U.S. Navy, you and the Navy, full speed ahead. Dick Stockton and Bill Raftery here in uh, Indiana, where the Hoosiers lead to the Boilermakers, 58 to 53. But Purdue putting on a big second half rush here. And I want to remind you, Connecticut and Syracuse comes next here on CBS. Indiana extending the floor. Purdue, the last number of trips have gotten great opportunities because of solid screening. Indiana's got to react either with the switch or work yourself through or around. Here's a box set, usually a double someplace. Yep, it's for Austin. Waddell with the ball. Trying to fight through is Austin. So look at the redouble. He had no one, and it was deflected out of bounds. Ooh. Still right now, let's look at the foul trouble as Henderson thinks that no one had touched the ball. And Allen Henderson is one of those players in foul trouble right now. And now, if he gets this call, he's not going to be a doctor. He's going to be a lawyer. <laughs> now, there's your foul problems. Three for Indiana have four fouls, and Jennings and Bradley have four for Purdue. And they're going to go along with it. Well, it's Allen's house. Not Allen Fieldhouse. No, it's but it's Allen's house. <laughs> forget being a physician like your dad. Be a lawyer. Be an attorney. <laughs> 18 turnovers in the game for Purdue. Evans driving the baseline. Big basket for Brian Evans, who has nine points. Indiana trying to keep Purdue at bay. And bad defense here. Probably the foul problem. Should have been great. And they're going to call it against Hairston after the good entry pass. So two situations called against Purdue here. Down in the lane, he got great position. And here's everybody staying at home and smart play. Harrison does not get the benefit, but Evans offers it up and lets the officials know, and much to the chagrin of Gene Cady. And you can add Roy Harrison to the list of those players with four personal. Ah, you there, Yellen. Uh, here at Assembly Hall, Indiana, trying to make a run for another turn of the And Charlie Miller gets the basket but it's called for the charge. The basket will count. I'm I know not, you love that. I'm not a fan of this at all. This keeps everybody happy. Pick a side. You want to give Knight a, a shot or you want to give Katie? Don't try and get both of them to take you out for dinner. Here's one of those bang bangers. Score the goal. I did not think he was there in time. Now, that's one of those bang bangers so you can't argue with an official. But wipe one out or call it the other way. Give him the goal and let him go to the foul line. Miller with 14 or, points. The look from Gene Cady on Ed Hightower for call the charge. Cady is saying, did he really score that basket there? But Miller does show you some signs, too, though. Oh. I don't know Cady's not thinking about Miller. Uh, but that does keep everybody smiling. That's why when people say, is Bob Knight going to retire? 
with the freshmen he has, including Charlie Miller, what would he do? And this is a great situation. Well, then he could meet with us the day before a game. I mean, that was this is the highlight of his week. Shuffle cut and a pick and roll. Nine point lead for the Hoosiers. Good. Brady. Brady. The Jennings from what else? Now they say that all game that was not run once all game. And everybody knows Bob Knight's ability as a coach. Uh, in this state, sometimes you've forgotten what Katie can do and does do. Great little pick and roll call from the sideline. Jennings with 15, Purdue's leading score. Here is Evans in the lane. He's at two big baskets. And again, it's nine. Coming up with big baskets. Evans has got to play better D down on the box. He may get caught behind again and not get the benefit of the call. Hanzo Martin. Great play by Reed. Stripped it away from Martin. And a one-armed player, so look at this. Does he want to use the right pick? Look at him. Oh. He is the real one-armed man. Oh. The pain he's going through. Every time he gets rid of the ball, it's a relief. Wasn't Richard Kimball from Indiana? <laughs> Here is Charlie Miller going up again. He's hot. That's a two-point pass but Indiana will take it. 16 for Miller, and they're up by 11. Got to be solid this trip. Hanzo Martin for three, and he comes back with his fourth three-point basket of the second half, 13 in the game for Martin. What a pineapple he has, huh? Remember him from Maui, huh? <laughs> well, he's got a ticker coming up big. Silences everybody. Seven-point lead, and a timeout is called. By Indiana. This game is headed down the wire. Bob Knight yelling at his star. Please empty your pockets, sir. I've got a tin foil, spark plug, my retainer, and my Tostitos. I'll hold these. Try again. I think that's it. Aha! Uh -huh. Tostitos salsa. I wouldn't open that. Break out Tostitos tortilla chips and salsa. The next thing you know, you've got a party. Did you know you have a metal plate in your hand? Really? No, not really. Well, you feed off a lot of things, and one of them is courage in college basketball. Neil Reed, you mentioned the one-armed guy. Well, the fugitive at large there was Zoe. And he can't eat. Look at that arm, Dick. A tremendous and wincing in timeout. Drinking with his left hand, passing the bottle back to the manager with his left hand in anguish. Whatever it takes. Miller goes inside to Henderson. Oh. Alan Henderson with 24. Indiana had their lead cut to three, and in the last three minutes, Hoosiers have outscored Purdue 13 to six. And the activity set it up off the basketball. Great entry pass. Indiana has responded to some good charges by Purdue. Jennings is fouled, and that will be the I think on team foul on Herman. Could have been Evans, too. How about this basketball? Look at the look at this screen away. That is unbelievable. The slip in, and now that should have been a switch automatically. The strong send it in by Sir Allen. Next team foul of Indiana will be the bonus situation for Purdue. Indiana already in the bonus for them. Purdue with 17 fouls. Waddell throws the ball away. He was trying to get it to Jennings and a bad time for a Purdue turnover, trailing by 10. Mm -hmm. Now run your bumps if you're Indiana and react to them. The last screen away, they should have switched. And here's the same play. Good. Oh! it up, Charlie! There could be a star of the future right here. And Charlie Miller, who has a season high of 18 points. And a career high being the freshman from Miami, Florida. Doug is fouled. And let's see if they call it on Henderson or Miller. And it's going to be on... Henderson, I think. Let's see. How about a guy by the name of Miller with hops? <laughs> he can elevate quick and strong. Miller, so Henderson remains in the game with his four. Miller picks up his third. And going to the line will be Herb Dove, an 80% shooter from the line. Oh, that was aggressive. My man, Charles, elevating. So the turnovers and the missed free throws. To Doom Purdue trying to win an incredible fifth straight road to game in the Big Ten. They've won four in a row and it's slipping away because Indiana and it's tipped in for a basket. Let's see who gets credit for it. It's 70 to 60. 
With 4.15 remaining, Brantley gets credit for the basket. Bruce Weber, the assistant to Gene Caddy, was just talking to Matt Waddell as to assignments, and Jennings now over. Steal by Dove. Good anticipation by Dove. Crowd thought he palmed the ball, but he had a little difficulty with it, to say the least. Eight-point Indiana lead, under four minutes remaining. Waddell trying to overplay Michael Herman. Same look like screen away for Henderson. I see if they back screen Evans if they don't get anything. Bradley denying Henderson beautifully. And there's Evans across the lane. Good cut. Ha <laughs> ha! Give and go basketball at his best. Great. And Herman has shown most of the afternoon his ability to go without the basketball. Good look by Evans. Nine for Herman. Lead is 10. Less than three and a half minutes on the clock. Dove nearly lost control and he did. Double dribble on Herb Dove and turnover. 21. Herb had a little trouble with the poundage in the pill. Just terrific understanding. You see the slide by Matt Waddell gets hooked up, starts sneaking a peek, and Michael Herman, who will contribute in a sound fashion in the next couple of years, he's going to be awfully good. Great look. Well, Indiana needs a figure six wins in their last eight games to really have NCAA possibilities. No basket if it goes, and the foul against. Purdue, Justin Jennings, and he may be out of there, and that is his fifth personal foul. Timeouts, two apiece. That was the 18th foul against Purdue, but right now the Indiana in control, leading by 10 with just 3.07 on the clock. And he'll be replaced, Will Jennings, by Hairston. This play caused the foul, but look at the duck in and the gamble pass. Your experienced people. Evans on the outside knows that Alan Henderson will go after it. That's something they want Lindemann to do. Go after the basketball. Here's Alan Henderson. A lot of time on the line today. Misses the free throw. He's got 24 in the game. Still time for Purdue, especially with the threat of the threes. And you know, you love it. Martin we makes it an eight point. Now, you Dude. mentioned threes. I don't, it's just that you don't have to go for threes unless it really shows good use of the dribble by a talented performer. So, Martin. Look at how they identify. Herman Henderson. Cutting better than they did in the first game. 26 for Allen Henderson, who has averaged 23 in his last three games. Conzo Martin misses the three, but he's fouled in three-point range by Hart, who has fouled out of the game for Indiana. And Martin will shoot three at the line as Steve Hart fouls out, having scored six. Not one you want to give away. Here's the pick, and look at the activity. This is a team that screens better. Now, all of the attention's on the dribble as they double and triple. Henderson screens, releases, and then sends it in. Steve Hart leaves the game and he's replaced by Neil Reed. Six points for Hart today. And Conzo Martin, who is one for two from the line, will attempt three here. And these are critical three point, three free throws for Hart. See the pressure at the end of it, too, Dick. It enables you, if he knocks them down, to do some gambling a little bit. And it's going to put a lot of pressure on Reed and Herman. Reed, the difficulty with the right hand or right arm. Just hanging in a limp fashion. This is the second. Has one more coming. There's that arm. End of the year, I guess they're going to look to get that thing straightened out for him. Two out of three, and it's 74 to 66. Full court pressure for Purdue. And we're going to see if they trap out of it. Individual. Look at this guy, one handed. Got no use of that right hand. No, nah, it couldn't even run a yo-yo up and down. Right arm. Pretty cut. Good luck. No luck. Herman to Miller. Guards playing big today for Bob Knight. And a three-point basket by Martin comes right back to keep Purdue in the ball game. And he's limping a little. Remember the cramps in the Michigan State game? 76-69. Two minutes remaining. 
And a foul called against Dove. And that'll be one in the bonus for Indiana. Well, the nickel dimer out at half court, they're accentuating it this year. But this, once again, is the dribble that they work so hard, attracting people, the cut and the strong. Complete as Charlie arrived, would you say? South Miami, the contribution well, to Indiana. These two freshman guards, Miller and Herman, and you knew they were going to gel. And, of course, let's not forget Neil Reed, who's a freshman as well from Metairie, Louisiana, playing hurt. Coming next, it'll be Syracuse and Connecticut from the Carrier Dome. The Orangemen with a chance to tie UConn and give them their first Big East loss. But for UConn, big stake, right? Mm, absolutely. Number one uh, given, a lot of people feel, if they can get by this game. Connecticut won the first game between these teams, but uh, Syracuse had led in the first half. Mm -hmm. and, and this particular game, I think Syracuse has gotten a little bit better. Uh, should be a heck of a contest. That follows us. Reed makes one free throw. Eight-point lead, 156. You're right, too early for the threes, but Martin can fire him away at any time. Well, if it does show you, I'll tell you, look at the easy position up for Harrison. Nice, almost. In the end, Proud thinks that Harrison batted it away, and they may have a point. These, these officials have done a nice job. Tom O'Neill ready to change it. You know, once in a while, they'll point the wrong way to team. That's not an endearing smile. They, they, they meant it was Indiana's ball. Harrison knocked it out. That was a good call here. Here's Herman, three on three. Good defensive play. And that was Harrison. You don't need it. Bob Knight screaming off the bench for the foul. Doesn't get it. Tipped up, missed by Brantley. Indiana still with the eight-point lead. And this is Doc and Bob Knight. They want it outside. Running some clock. Next foul by Purdue will result in an automatic two shot. What would you give Knight's vertical lift? Six. Well, Sunday, the Saturday. Out of ten. Out of ten. He couldn't jump over the Four. Saturday edition of the Daily News. He's up trying to get control. Matt Waddell committing the foul, so it'll be two shots now for Indiana. But that's part of what you live and die with, with young people. Mm -hmm. and, and look at this. He's a, Oh, please. I cleaned it up a little. Tell you what, you got to go through freshman uh, throwing adjustment, right? Mm -hmm. Reed makes the first free throw. Brad Miller back in for Purdue with 111 on the clock. I don't know who the player of the game's going to be yet, but I know that Neil Reed is the courageous player oh, of this he, game. Oh, huh? he does win that hands down. Harrison had some good opportunities around the glass, just couldn't knock those bank shots down. Home team has won seven of the last eight games between these two state rivals, and it could be eight out of nine the way it's gone here with 79-69 lead and a foul against Purdue. Miller fouled out. Well, he was in foul trouble from the start today. They got out of, out of the gate with the two early ones, and it changed the adjustment for Gene Cady, who has a sarcast sarcastic applause for the officials. say that Miller has four. So we're going to let him stay in the game. Well, is that your call? Yeah. After much consideration. Now, this is the level of play that you would expect from an Indiana team. It's not that they didn't play hard in the last Purdue game. They played very hard. It's just judgments didn't prevail. The screening wasn't the factor that it normally is. And Gene Cady sort of prepared us for how tough it is to play here. Gave it a run, though. Miller with 21 points, a career high. Martin, baseline to Dove. 80 to 71 with a minute remaining. And they wanted the timeout, didn't get it. And you got to beat and then pull out. Indiana's not going to rush anything here. 25 on the shot clock, and a foul. Waddell forced to commit the foul, does. Two shots for Reed of Indiana. Well, that shoulder harness, same thing that Evans wore last year on the right arm as well. For Evans, it was okay because he shot lefty. He's got more hitches than a cross-country wagon. That, uh, so uncomfortable for him, the pain. UConn, Syracuse coming up next. Battle for the Big East lead. Syracuse can tie. Remember, no team has ever finished the Big East undefeated, and UConn is unbeaten right now. That's coming up next. The Ballon battle, Henderson. The battle of the Jimmies up there. Yeah. And some great talent. Ray Allen, great backcourt for UConn. And 
Wallace Moten and company. High level. Henderson with 26, Miller with 21. 11 rebounds as well for Henderson. He did it in the first half and makes the fine defensive play. Indiana, after losing twice here, going to win this game against Purdue and even their season series. Big win for the Hoosiers. Oh, were they ready for all the offensive maneuvers? Even the zone, a very valued friend at the latter stages of this first half, got them comfortable, kept guys with fouls out of trouble. Turnover will give it back to Purdue. Martin with 20 points, 19 in the second half. Not enough for Gene Cady. So looking at the standings now, giving the loss to Purdue, a game and a half lead for Michigan State, and now Minnesota also in the fight. That's Bradley with under 10 seconds to play. So the six-game winning streak for the Boilermakers will come to an end. Indiana wins and goes six and five in the Big Ten. Two solid programs, and maybe that gets Indiana pointed in that NCAA direction, Dick. They're going to need a bunch of wins, and they got some road, tough road games down the stretch, but for today, anyway, Allen Henderson with 26 leads Indiana to a victory. Final score, Indiana 82 and Purdue 73. A lot of respect right there. And our Chevrolet players of the game, Conzo Martin, with 19 second-half points up with 20 and Alan Henderson who played big today for Bob Knight. So for Bill Raftery, I'm Dick Stockton saying so long from Assembly Hall. Final score, Indiana 82 and Purdue 73. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Basketball Championship. So long everybody. Perfect the all-new 1995 Monte Carlo. We spent countless hours adjusting the audio controls. You see, Monte Carlo was designed from the inside out to be your own personal space, so every interior detail had to be in harmony. Paying attention to finding it on the way there. United Airlines renowned international service to 15 cities all across Europe. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly our friendly skies. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom Snyder. This week, John Larroquette, Ann DeVere Smith, and the guys who write those corny Valentine's cards on The Late Late Show here on CBS. This is CBS. Well, it's Cherry Hill from Columbus. The difficult season for Coach Randy Ayers and the Buckeyes of Ohio State, but the support is still strong. And tonight in Columbus, we've got a sold-out St. John Arena as the Buckeyes try to beat the Hoosiers of Indiana for the third straight year on their home floor. Huge road game tonight for the Hoosiers of Indiana. They try to go six games over the 500 mark for the first time this year, matching up with the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers along with Derek Dickey, and welcome to Columbus. Well, the uh, Indiana Hoosiers have picked up the pace over the last couple of weeks, fortunately getting back together in the Big Ten race. And in each game, it's been a different player, Derek, coming to the forefront for Bobby Knight. Indeed, it has. And freshman Charlie Miller's coming off his best game of his career with 21 big points and a win over Purdue on Saturday. Also, Brian Evans has been second, stepping up. He's healed from his shoulder surgery during the offseason, but now the man that's been the mainstay for the Hoosiers has been Allen Henderson. Tremendously gifted athletic player who plays great defense, can block the shots, run the floor, but what Allen's been giving are the intangibles. Leadership with this young Hoosier basketball team. He is the only senior in the starting lineup. They need him to come up big once again on the road tonight. Just about ready to go from Columbus, but let's head back to the studio now and join Chris Fowler. Joel, thank you. Here in the studio, we'll be tracking five top 25 games, three marquee matchups in the Northeast, Syracuse and Nova. The new number one team, Connecticut, defends that ranking for the first time, visiting Georgetown, and a former number one, UMass, tries to get revenge against that guy, Mike Jarvis and George Washington. We'll have that game. And coming up, Mississippi State, Eric Dampier, player of the week in the SEC, but a tough assignment for the Bulldogs as they visit Rupp Arena. Clark Kellogg will join me at halftime, the former Buckeye, Wanting to defend Alan Henderson, but you can't. The current guys are going to have to. Tip off coming up.
ESPN and IntelliPlay bring you world-class athletes that teach you the techniques that put them at the top of their game. The PGA's all-time money. BN's NCAA basketball. Brought to you by Saab and your local Saab dealers who invite you to test drive the Saab 900 and new 900 turbo coupe and convertible. By Pizza Hut. You'll love the stuff we're made of. And by the Pepsi-Cola Company, who reminds you that nothing else is a Pepsi. Welcome back once again to a sold-out St. John Arena. Joel Myers along with Derek Dickey. As we get ready for Super Tuesday, 24th season for Bobby Knight at Indiana. Needs a big one as well from Brian Evans. Evans, a forward, leads the team, believe it or not, in assists this year. Sixth year, Randy Ayers and Antonio Watson leads in just about every category for Ohio State through 6'9", senior. He's not a real banger inside, though, but very athletic. Now we're ready to go. Seven games left in the conference season. For the Hoosiers of Indiana, so, so much importance in every game because they're only 6 and 5 in conference play. Indiana has to have this game so they can keep their NCAA tournament hopes alive. And Ohio State wants to be the giant killer. They don't have a hope of going to the tournament this year, but certainly you got to start off by taking care of the ball. And right away, Etzler lost it. A turnover to start the contest for the Buckeyes. The Buckeyes have taken four of the last five here in Columbus over the Hoosiers of Indiana. Indiana is such a patient basketball team, very methodical when it comes to running their offense, looking for the best shot available, also keeping an eye on the clock. Evans right on target to start the game. On the season, he's at 39% of his three-point drive. And it's an early three-point lead for the Hoosiers. Brian Evans is the kind of guy who loves to spot up and shoot, but defenses have been keying on him, so he's got to put the ball on the floor and create some things off the dribble. Watson barely got it away. Good defensive pressure and a good job to get it up there. That's a good job by Antonio Watson. As you mentioned, not very physical, but as able to change hands and get the ball up toward the basket. Anderson averaging 20 for a game coming in. Also 10 boards per contest. For young players, young student athletes, keep an eye on the execution of the Indiana Hoosiers. They're running good, solid screens, making direct cuts to the basket. Michael Herman with his first basket. The first player to come to Bobby Knight from the public league in Chicago out of King High School. You know, he does have a reputation coming in. Average 27 points and 10 rebounds a game for Sonny Cox. Kessler, the quick release from the holster. Randy Ayers mentioned to Doug Esther, yes, he's a good shooter when he's open, but not very quick of foot. But if he's able to get that shot off, which he's got to look for, he can help the Buckeyes get on the board early. Charlie Miller coming off his best game as a Hoosier in the last one. 21 against Purdue. What a cut. Steve Hartzell. Body there. It's going to be a blocking foul on Rick Hughes. 